this is the first concept that I want to talk about, which is viscosity versus fluidity. So when you use anything like gouache or watercolor, or you're going to be talking about some kind of viscosity. There, each technique that you do with each medium will have a, an ideal viscosity. So the first thing is just to learn what this means. When you are painting with some of these pigments, you're going to see either high transparency or low transparency or opaqueness. We call this opaque. So I'm going to set up four boxes and we're going to mix these viscosities together. So the first thing you want to do is paint butter. And what butter is, is butter has no water, extra water in it. So if I wanted to do next, if I want to do cream, I'm going to add a little bit of water. Now, this is where it's really important to say, how much is a little bit of water? The idea is to mix enough water. Watch what I do is I take my brush and put it in the water and I do this and I add it slowly. Maybe heavy cream. You don't want it to be like milk. You would get something like this. And the nice thing about cream texture as it flows off the brush really nice. So it just seems to be a lot easier to manipulate than butter. So if I want coffee, now I'm looking for something with more water in it. You can see through it. It, it is transparent or semi to tea. Now tea is the most fluid This is, this is fluidity on this side. And this is two viscosity. And this is the metaphors we use, which are tea, coffee, heavy cream, and butter. And each media that you use, especially if you use watercolor, with watercolor, you're going to stay within this coffee tea area. That's where you want to stay. And basically, you're doing tea almost most of the time. If you do gouache, you can use tea. You can do tea and gouache, but it takes a long time to dry. And this is what we know about watercolor. Watercolor takes a long time to dry. So when people use gouache, they tend to stay in this realm. And then with acrylic, acrylic can do all three. Let's just do a practice palette. So generally when you do a palette to look at your colors, it looks something like this, right? But let's do something more interesting that looks like this. First of all, what you wanna draw is a really unusual outline. You want to draw as many interesting things to this outline as possible. So it's a closed form. You want some circles in there or curves. You want some angles. I think these look, end up looking like bugs. So use your bug form. So once you have your bug or your, your outline, your silhouette, put a triangle in the middle. Okay, so now what you're going to do is try to connect the edges of the triangle to the outer edges of the shape. So let's just start with yellow. So, and the first thing I do want to do is paint somewhere with the thickest yellow I can, can make. And I'm going to just choose this leg to start with. This yellow is very transparent. I'm putting water in it. You can, do it, can see that. So I'm going to make an area which is this yellow. And we're going to paint it somewhere else. 
not near the other yellow. Because one of the things about this painting is we want to keep our wet layers away from each other and let them time to dry, especially when they're really watery. So this is my cream yellow and this is my tea yellow. And there's a, there's a pretty big step in terms of value, but there's also a little step in, in temperature. So check this out. This color looks warmer than this color. I'm gonna use my red. Again, I'm gonna squeeze a little bit on my palette. I'm gonna paint out my swatch with as thick as I can, butter. This is another very transparent color. Just paint that in wherever you want to. Now, when I'm working with this color, my brush feels super dry. So I'm gonna add a little water to get a little more fluid. And I'm gonna paint the next shape somewhere on this composition with cream. And let's do a, a T. So let's come back to our painting that we've let dry. And now we're gonna work in layers. I'm going to hatch this yellow. And instead of like drawing out the mark, I'm printing the mark with the side of the brush. I also have with me some colored pencils. Um, what's so nice about watercolor pencils is you can go and define things. So this is like a white pencil on gouache, which gives that kind of effect. So with this yellow, I'm going to put a transparent layer of blue over it. Let's see how this is gonna work. And what happens is, let's put it over here. You can see how the under layer is starting to affect the top layer. See what you like. Sometimes I like that with blending. So I'm gonna take an orange transparent layer and put it on this blue shape and mix it by just agitating the surface. And you'll see it dries, it'll dry in a particular way. Again, test out your miniature dots. So 
little circle eye.